So welcome to Essential Cycling. So we are gonna do a bike check today on a 2021 Giant TCR Advanced Pro Zero Disc. So that was a mouthful. So this is a 2021 model Giant TCR. It's the Advanced Pro version zero. It's a disc brake bike, DI2, full carbon, the whole nine yards. Basically what this bike is, is it's Giant's all around lightweight, if you can call that lightweight, all around lightweight race bike. It's got disc brakes, of course. In 2021, most bikes are disc brakes, no more rim brakes. Save the rim brake, RIP. Hydraulic disc brakes. It's got Shimano, electronic shifting you hit a button it shifts it's really nice it's seamless makes cool noises it's called shimano di2 got little electrical wires right there so di2 actually is short for digital integrated intelligence if anyone's wondering if anyone cares i thought it was pretty cool altegra 11 speed shifting so it's got two front chain rings 11 in the back from the top we got a carbon bar width is 44 centimeters i measured a 42 the 44 has been okay for me i think in time i probably will change to a 42 i'm still getting used to the bike i've only ridden it like a handful of times but overall pretty decent 110 millimeter stem i got lizard skin bar tape on there the bike fitter the bike shop i bought it from they threw it on there for me no charge awesome support your local bike shop go in there find a good one build a community the di2 hoods they're considerably smaller than the mechanical hydraulic hoods that i was using on my old felt bike that i still have in the garage but they're nice they're comfortable brakes are really smooth the altegra brakes with the altegra rotors are really smooth as to be expected with hydraulic disc brakes we've got the junction box right there it's in the bar that's how you charge the di2 battery i wasn't too psyched about that at first because i like to use a bar end mirror but i found this little strap on zephal spy mirror it gets the job done it's, it's not as elegant of a solution as a bar end mirror and i think at some point i do want to try to put the junction box over here that way i can put a bar and mirror in the left but uh that requires new bars these bars don't can't put the junction box on the right side with these bars so in due time i'll figure it out we got giants wahoo integrated mount that's pretty cool you can put a lighter gopro under there the wahoo just goes right there keeps the bars nice and clean 30 millimeters of spacers so this bike the color is chameleon neptune it's a really really nice blue i'm a sucker for blue bikes i always end up buying blue bikes i'm not sure what it is size large it fits me really well i did get a bike fit on this bike and so I know it fits me, it's comfortable, it's not too aggressive, it's not too relaxed, not too long, too short, it fits just right. Coming down here, I just put some basic tax, T-A-C-X, I'm not sure how you say it, water bottle cage that I had just lying around. I got a little Topeak pocket rocket pump. I always, always like to have a pump with me on rides. I don't use those little cartridges, CO2 cartridges. I just prefer a pump. And with tubeless, you don't really have to use them that much anyway. Up front, we got a 5236 chain ring setup and in the back we got 1130 cassette i'm used to running a much much lower gear my felt had a 4630 or it has a 4630 in the front and 1132 in the back so quite a big jump but this bike is considerably lighter and stiffer than the felt so it shouldn't be much of an issue plus it's definitely going to help because i'm just going to have to power muscle it up those hills i'll be getting stronger and getting in shape a lot faster anyway with the di2 system electrical wires right here an electrical wire i think right there uh, it's back there somewhere and i do have mountain bike pedals on this bike i've never used road pedals i don't have anything against road pedals but i've always used mountain bike systems i just got a new pair of well a little while ago i got a new pair of shimano xc9 s fire shimano xc9 s fire shoes and those are really cool so i don't have anything against road shoes but i don't feel like spending the money right now maybe in the summer maybe in a year or something i'll give them a shot but right now it's not in the budget so mountain bike shoes do okay this bike does come with a dual sided power meter that's something that's really nice really that's pretty much what i was looking to get on my felt anyway so i ended up just getting the bike that has the power meter on it and it's great um, i don't have to worry about it it's rechargeable and let's see if i can show you guys see there's the left side pod right there there's another pod right underneath this chain ring right here so that's pretty nice that's really cool carbon wheels these wheels are really good i really like them i think they're a great option for a bike at this price point uh, i'm still probably going to put on my mv3.4 wheels in the summertime but 
it's nice to have a second set of really nice good quality wheels giant slr1 wheels are really nice i think they have dt swiss internals let's see if we could do a free hub body test nice mean deep loud sound and just stock saddle stock seat post bike is basically stock this bike did come with 25 millimeter cadence kdx racing tires they're pretty good but i actually threw on a set of 30 millimeter schwalbe g1 speed tires i did this just because it's winter time and you guys could probably see that i got a little bit of dirt on them i was taking this bike on gravel paths it's funny i've i think i've ridden this bike I've ridden more gravel with this bike than I have any other bike before. And this is a road racing bike anyway. So just pretty funny, but I'll have to get the most out of my products, especially if you spend a lot of money on them. It's a great bike. Geometry is great. Like I said, I got a bike fit on it. Things that I don't like about the bike, there's only a handful of things I don't like about it. The main thing first was that this DI2 junction box on the left side, if it was on the right side, it would just make life a little bit easier. I could just throw in my bar end mirror, no problem. Uh, it'd be a little bit more of an elegant solution of this mirror that just kind of straps around the bar. Not really a big deal breaker though. It'd be nice if the bike came with 42 centimeter bars, not 44, because now if I want to put carbon bars on here, I got to spend another couple of hundred bucks just to shorten the width of the bars. Whereas the Trek Imanda in this size would come with 42 centimeter bars. But not really that big of a deal i am kind of nitpicking and the other thing too is well there's three things the second thing is as good as these wheels are they're hookless wheels so you basically only have like a couple of options for tires you can use schwalbe tires like the g1s or the pro one road tire you could use kdex tires giant tires but you can't use continental grand prix 5000 tires that i have on my envies now it's not really much of a problem for me because like i said i'm going to put my envies on here at some point probably when it gets really nice out and i'm trying to do a lot of miles but the grand prix 5000 tubeless tire is just an amazing tire it rolls nice it's comfortable and that's the major drawback with these wheels that being said the nice thing about these wheels is they do have external nipples so if you develop a slight wobble in these wheels you're going to be able to fix it no problem whereas a lot of carbon wheels like the mbs you're going to have to put a screwdriver or a special tool from the inside meaning you have to break the seal put you know it won't it's not as serviceable on the side of the road so that's another thing i would complain about and the third thing this really isn't um that big of a deal but for a race bike it's pretty relaxed for a race bike it doesn't feel a whole lot different from my felt vr30 endurance bike which is just straight up endurance bike it's not twitchy like a race bike it's not super hunched over like a race bike so it does feel a bit more relaxed it feels a little bit more like an endurance all-around bike versus a straight-up race bike i was looking at the geometry of this bike versus like the two bikes i had beating the felt vr30 and the wabi classic and I was even looking at the Trek Imanda. The Trek Imanda is racier than this. Now that being said, uh, what I've tried doing is I actually lowered the bars. Just I had I had them all the way up top. I lowered them down, so I lowered them 15, 15 millimeters lower. Because if you want the bike to feel more racier, first thing you should do is just lower the bars, give it a shot, see how it feels. A racier bike is fun. It's flickable. It's twitchy. It responds really good. It feels like a race car. It's amazing, but. I will say that for my Wabi Classic, for example, that's a very racy bike. I'm not always in the mood to ride super flat back, super aggressive, hunched over posture. So it's nice that this bike is an all around race bike, but it doesn't force you into that position all the time. You can get down low if you want, but if it's a long day out or you're tired, no problem. And that's pretty much the reason why I chose this bike over the Amanda or anything else. You know, I walked into the bike shop, I wanted to get a second pair of good quality wheels for my felt i wanted to change the i wanted to throw a shimano crank on my felt and i wanted to get a power meter for my felt and i saw this bike and this bike pretty much is just the whole kit and caboodle obviously it's a lot more money than just getting a new set of wheels and a new new power meter on my felt but what i'm getting is i'm getting a, a modern race bike full carbon very comfortable this really bike is really a great all-around bike the only thing if giant opened up the tire clearance to 35 millimeter tires that's it it's pack your bag see you later because you can pretty much put 35 millimeter gravel tires in this thing you don't need a gravel bike that's it it's your one bike does it all and i think that's where the industry is going the tire clearance is going to get wider and wider and wider i know the trek damani can fit 38 millimeter tires but that bike's really relaxed really endurance probably really slow handling so 
anyone that's going from an endurance bike and wants to go to a race bike i think the tcr it it's not going to feel a whole lot different it's not going to feel like oh i got to really get super low in it it's a great bike everyone knows about it there's tons and tons of reviews and as far as when i bought this bike i looked at this bike for about a year before buying it i bought it two or three months ago and i was looking at this one and the one that's in like that darker color that has that says giant in white there's the mechanical shifting version about a thousand dollars cheaper i always kind of thought i'd go with the mechanical but you know this is all they had um i'm a sucker for blue bikes with the bike shortage because of the pandemic i said you know what i had the money i thought about it for a couple of days i jumped on it and i'm super happy i did if i could do it all over again this would be the first bike that I would buy. Great bike, give it a shot. TCR, great value. Probably one of the only road bikes that comes with a power meter and it's just super, super, super versatile as far as a race bike goes. Comfortable, good. Giant supposedly has a really great warranty program. I know that's what the shop was saying. And one more thing. So I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, you guys could see. I could see, you could see. The bike fitter that prepared this bike for me, this cable is external routing which I don't mind, I mean, pros and cons. It's, it'd be nice to have internal cable routing, but hey, you know, the easy, harder to service. So it just looks a little bit old school, easier to service, so it's just simpler. But this cable touches the frame. The bike fitter put a piece of helicopter tape, it looks like, right there to protect the frame. I didn't ask him to do that. He did that out of his own heart. That tells me it's a good work ethic, and that's a great shop. That's why you should always support your local bike shop. You're going to be able to go back to them. You're going to be able to ask them questions. You're going to be able to build a community and a relationship with them. That way, if you need something in a jam, it's a good business relationship. If you find a good shop, of course, not all shops are like that, but that's the hallmark of a really good bike shop and a really good bike fitter and someone that just cares about what they do for a living. Guys, that's, that's, that about wraps it up. I think I've said everything I need to say. Um, TCR, great bike. Get one if you can find them. You don't have to get this model. You can get one of the cheaper models. I think the disc model started at 2600, 105. You can even get the rim brake model. The nice thing about TCR, they're still offering it in a rim brake. You can get the rim brake model for 2000 bucks. I think that's a great budget bike. And uh, yeah, you know, disc brakes are nice, but as long as you're riding in the dry, I don't think it really matters. You know, rim brakes are rim brakes, disc brakes are disc brakes. So thanks so much guys for stopping by. Always appreciate it. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. Consider subscribing. Stay safe, and I'll see you on the road.